I pulled this up last week, and I unfortunately did not have the time to 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 talk about it. Um, and, and then uh, on Twitter, actually, when when somebody uh, saw the game show tweet that Graham Elwood posted up, uh, they replied and they said, "Hey, you guys should talk about this." And I'd already pulled this up, so I was like, "Oh, look at this." Okay, so so some people are already kind of in the know about what's going on with this story, but this story is pretty brutal. Uh, so 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 uh, I guess content warning i don't know if i need to put that up for people but but th th this is this is a particularly uh brutal story so this is over in uh in in canada land where everybody thinks that canada is just this greatest amazing place uh where you know they they got health care so that's that's cool but that doesn't mean that they're not a uh they're also not a colonial imperialist state <laughs> that has their own skeletons in their closet and in this case uh, quite literally, because recently 215 indigenous children, uh, some of them as young as three years old, were discovered in a mass grave, in a mass grave at the Kamloops Indian Residential School in British Columbia. It's over on the west side, over on the west side of uh, of Canada land there, of Canada. Uh, and uh, so this place used to be, so, so what's going on with this, right? 215, 215 indigenous children in a mass grave uh, not really a story you hear all that often you know you, you, you just don't it's not something that cnn's going to talk about you don't turn on the news and they go guess what guys we're talking mass graves we're doing the mass grave discussion today it's finally happening i know everybody's been waiting for it you know everybody's been saying anderson cooper when are you going to talk about some mass graves well here we are we're doing it uh, that's never going to happen. This is not a topic of conversation you hear on corporate mainstream media. Uh, so here's what's going on with this. This is this is from the Liberation, which is the uh, PSL paper that they put out. It is uh, it, so the Kamloops Indian Residential School in British Columbia used to be a boarding school. That's what it was. It was a boarding school. And uh, what they used to do with this boarding school was uh, conversions. That's what they would do. They like to they like to do some 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 conversions, primarily to Christianity and and offshoots of uh, Christianity. And they forced the indigenous were forced into this. They were forced into attending the school, forced into learning the principles of Christianity, and forced to practice Christianity as well. Um, they they were abused and barred from participating in any sort of native culture. So anything that related to who they are as people um, and who they are as individuals, who they are as a culture was essentially being erased, right? Uh, so it wasn't just enough that countries like Canada and the United States uh, straight up genocide and massacre, which is what happened. They, they, they massacred uh, Native Americans and did indigenous people. But nay, it shan't end there. They're going to take their kids and essentially say that, you know, you can't practice your own culture. You can't be who you actually are. You have to deny your own blood. You have to deny your own genetics uh, and become something else to to fit into this colonial ideology. And so that's what they did. They they would abuse these kids and they would force them into participating in Christian religion, in, in Christian ideology, in Christian practices and all that sort of stuff. Um, and, you know, uh, again, it's it's like, is Christianity all bad? I think there's some cool stuff in there. I think there's a lot of people in this country, uh, a lot of individuals, not institutions. Um, the institutions are far and few be in between. But a lot of people that are true Christians, meaning they actually read the fucking book or they read parts of it or they understood the message behind the book and realized that it is about community that it is about taking care of each other you know um there there, there are core principles that that veer away from having a deity uh and those are cool what people have done with the religion what people have done with those principles um are terrible i think i think human beings need for control and power is is kind of what fucks up religion and i'll talk about that uh a little bit more in the next segment here but um 
you know, that's that's kind of what we see. We 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 saw we we saw this in the United States too. The United States also uh, did forced conversions um, of of Native Americans in this country. So what happened between eighteen the, between the eighteen eighties, give or take, you, you know, like early eighteen eighties to 1978 that's almost 100 years the indigenous children in this school were berated they were tortured at this boarding school um no they would they would get beaten they would they would uh get starved uh they would not feed these kids if they didn't fall in line with what the school was saying so for 100 years this was happening for 100 years this school in british columbia had a reputation of, of breaking indigenous kids because they didn't want the indigenous culture to, to, to be seen. They didn't want the indigenous culture to be a part of the mainstream, to be a part of the conversation, to even be a part of something that is recognized in Canada. So, so they were trying to erase all of that. Um, and, and they always claim, oh, it's assimilation. We want kids to assimilate. And that's cool. That's fine. But if you're doing it by torture, if you're doing it by starvation, if you're doing it by killing these kids and then hiding those murders and hiding those deaths, yeah, you, you, you're not you're no longer really an institution for assimilation. You're an institution for colonial uh, oppression. That's what you are. So that's what this boarding school became. One of the dudes, uh, his name was Lionel Pett. He was a physician. Um, and he particularly uh, experimented on the indigenous kids by, uh, you know, starving them, by uh, doing various nutritional experiments on them. Um, and this guy is known for building Canada's nutrition program. And how did he build it? By, by doing these brutal, ruthless fucking experiments on indigenous kids. And, you know... If, if you're going, oh, man, this is crazy. I can't believe a country like Canada, so, you know, this this democracy, this this place that has socialized medicine where people go to get their insulin and so on it's, it would do some. That's crazy. Well, don't worry, because Canada is not alone in this. The United States has done this as well. The United States has done this with with the black community, the indigenous community, the LGBTQ community, the immigrant community all throughout their history. Uh, that's how certain medicines were formed. And you got to ask the question. Well, is that the way you want to have a nutrition program? Is that the way you want uh, the cure to certain diseases? Is that the way you want the discovery to happen? You know, to, to, for, for scientific advancements to be achieved, it should, should it be should it be achieved? Should these things that 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 move our society forward come, you know, with a mass grave that we're not going to address until decades later? Now the answer to that question is obviously no. I, th there, there is a way to get scientific advancements without sacrificing the lives of uh, any sort of minority community, and you can see it in the way that the Black Panthers did it. Right, the Black Panthers um, in the sixties and seventies uh, used their survival program to essentially advance research on sickle cell anemia. That helped people with sickle cell anemia not die. And the reason why no research was being done in the United States to advance, you know, to, to help those kinds of people uh, was because it, sickle cell anemia was primarily seen in black people. It wasn't a, quote, white disease. So why would you look at it? Same thing with this. Lionel Pett developed a nutrition program for the primarily white citizens of Canada using the indigenous population as the, the scapegoat as 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 the test subjects you know pushing pushing limits and things of that sort starving them seeing how long the human body can last without food without proper nutrition you know what is the baseline for basic nutrition and that's really what what this sort of stuff boils down to it's not like hey are we are we feeding these people or do they have full bellies are they able to function in a society appropriately? No, it's what's the baseline amount of nutrition that we can give kids um, without spending too much money. That's what these nutrition programs all boil down to. They're just looking for that baseline. What's the what's the, the least we can do that is uh, morally okay 
and we'll do that. That's that's what this that's what people like Lionel Pet do. And you know, these are commonplace in your democracies and also fascist dictatorships. The Japanese would do ex weird experiments during World War II. The Nazis did weird experiments during World War II. And here we are. Lionel Pett in Canada is doing it well after World War II. And I'm pretty sure he killed a lot of those kids. And they buried them in mass graves that they have now discovered. So this is... A so, you know, if kids are dying, the question comes up, oh, well, why do the parents send them to these boarding schools? But they have no choice. If the parents resisted, well, they would get arrested and they would get sent to prison. And 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 then what? The, the kid has to have this unresolved feeling of, of resentment that because he didn't want to go to this basically conversion therapy boarding school death camp that is you know, parents are in prison now and then it, it doesn't matter anyway. Right. So the parents get sent to prison. The kid goes into the system. The system sends him to the boarding school anyway. And now these kids are, 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 are stuck with the knowledge that they resisted. Like their parents are in prison and they're also in a fucking horrifying boarding school. So, you know, there really wasn't a whole lot of choice. Uh, a lot of the kids died from malnutrition. Like we talked about, they died from fires. There were fires that they didn't save the indigenous kids from infections and dis infectious diseases such as tuberculosis because again the the priority isn't to help indigenous kids that's just not their priority they just don't give a shit they don't see them as um equal in this society and we've been talking about israel palestine right let's uh, it, 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 you you wonder why countries like the united states and canada are okay with the way israel treats palestinians right i i watched the gaza fights for freedom i watched that documentary today for for this month's show and i was taking my notes and it's abhorrent what they're doing over there but you know here we are we're seeing a country like canada you know, I, I, I last week I released a video about uh, the Tulsa race massacre where they they had mass graves in, in that situation as well. Hidden from history, hidden from the eye, hidden from uh, public knowledge. I mean, countries like this are totally fine with hiding massacres like this. They're totally fine in changing the narrative. Right. So, of course, they're OK with. Israel dehumanizing Palestinians to the point where a bunch of people are just okay with saying, let's bomb these people. And that's the only thing that they deserve. Because, because a country like this does that sort of stuff. So I, I would like to, you know, and I don't know if this is too strong of a statement or not. I, I, I don't personally think it is, but any sort of forced conversion, forced Christian conversion, forced Catholic conversion, uh, what have you, is cultural genocide. Is cultural genocide. That's what it is. You are getting rid of a culture that you do not agree with, that you do not like based on its spirituality, based on its religious affiliation, based on how they pray and worship to whatever higher being that they uh, they see as, you know, the creators of all things or the representatives of the creators of all things, whatever it is. You disagree with them, so we got to get rid of it instead of trying to have a conversation about, oh, let's see if we can work out these differences. No, 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 no. Fuck that noise. Right? That's that's what it is. Now, Canada is a secular nation, but it, religious freedom wasn't really guaranteed for Canada uh, till the 80s, till uh, uh, Papa Trudeau came into office. And he updated the Constitution Act, and the Constitution Act basically granted what are American First Amendment rights in writing to the people of Canada, um, so that was the first. That was really the first time that it did it. Now, the 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 confusing part is it does talk. Uh, it starts 
with a conversation about how they follow the rule of law, but also God's law, right? So it's very confusing when you say that you're a secular nation that is open to various different types of religion, philosophies, ideas, spiritualism, all that sort of stuff, and then say that that we're going to follow God's law. Which God? Well, it's the Christian one or the Catholic one. You know, this Judeo-Christian God is what, whose law we're going to follow. Well, pagans don't follow that law. Agnostics like myself don't follow that law. But, you know, atheists don't follow that law. Hindus don't follow that law. And Canada is an incredibly diverse country. I, I, you know, you get, they, they have a really big Sikh population. They don't follow the law of the Judeo-Christian God. So why would you put something like that in there? And it's this really confusing thing. And I, and I think it's to justify actions like this. Right? Like they know that there has been some religious violence in their history. And if they put that in there, they can say, well, that's following God's law. God just wanted that. Which then begs the question, it's like, why are you following a god that is cool with indigenous children being buried in a mass grave? Like, do you have a sociopath god that you follow? And and then the question is, why are you following a sociopath god? Should you, shouldn't you follow, like, the non-sociopathic god? <laughs> Wouldn't that be the smarter thing to do in this situation? Like, but they, but, you know, again, there there's no real discussion about that sort of stuff. So... What they were primarily guided by is Protestant and Christian doctrine. Um, and again, I haven't read the Bible cover to cover or anything, but I'm pretty sure, I'm fairly certain, that there is no passage in any of the Bibles that says, hey, if these people aren't willing to join our club, go ahead and kill them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not in there. I'm almost certain that's not in there. I might be wrong. And if I am, the comment section is yours. Uh, but again, if, if, if a God does say that, if a God's like, hey, I'm cool with genociding indigenous children, why are you following that God? That God kind of sounds like a fucking psychopath serial killer. What's funny is the irony is that sort of rhetoric of the, you know, oh, the, the religion is inherently violent is usually used as an excuse to hate um, people of the Islamic faith, Muslims, right? Oh, the religion is all about violence. The central core tenet is violence. That's, that's what we're told. But here we are, uh, a country that is guided by primarily Protestant and, and Christian philosophies is justifying the death of 215 innocent indigenous children found in a mass grave. Why do you follow a god like that? Um, now, the United States particularly, the United States has always been a secular nation. The First Amendment grants you the right to freedom of religion. Uh, so what these guys did is the crimes against the indigenous in the United States is a violation of the constitution. You force somebody to join a religion that they did not want to. You force somebody to become something that they didn't want to. They are against the constitution of the United States, which grants religious freedom. So pretty much presidents that push Westford ex expansion and are okay with colonialism, violated the Constitution of the United States. Any act of co colonialism is basically a violation of the Constitution of the United States. But much like the Bible, they like to cherry-pick the Constitution. They like to cherry-pick which thing they like to follow on which day, what they like to use as a justification for their crimes, instead of saying, hmm, you're right, we did commit those crimes, and it is a violation of the Constitution. Only when it serves them, only when it serves power, is the Constitution brought up. Is, are, are your rights, uh, do, do your rights ever come into question? 
any act of colonization is a violation of the United States Constitution. What we're doing over aiding Israel, violation of the United States Constitution, because that is aiding a colonial state. What we're doing in the Middle East, violation of the United States Constitution. The various military bases, yeah, violation of the United States, because that's all colonization. Territories like Puerto Rico and Guam, the U.S. Virgin Islands, they can't vote. They can't have a, a, a say in what happens in the United States, uh, uh, United States elections, but they are a victim of United States elections. Violation of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. But they won't say it because it's not convenient for them to say. How can they expand around the world? How can they take global manifest destiny if if that's some that's what's going to happen? You can't. They can't. Let me pop over and take a look at some comments. Got a bunch of people over on Rockfin. Thank you for joining us. We got Zozovic, Zo Zozovix. Uh, that's what my parents uh, did to me and parents do to their children in the billions. Tulsi Gabbard's dad apologized for the same shit. Uh, are you talking about like religious conversion, like forced religious conversions? Yeah, uh, I do. I think I remember her uh, her dad apologizing for that. And I think Tulsi actually had something to do uh, with that. Uh, my parents, you know, kind of pushed me into the whole religious thing as well. I went through like a big religious ceremony in India um, and, and you know, practiced it despite the fact that I didn't really uh, believe in it. Um, you, you know, uh, as Zozvik's comments, you live in my house, you believe in the God uh, in my house or you can't live here once uh, you live here once you're old enough before that all kinds of punishments yeah shunning in some form pra yeah yeah i've i've heard this in a lot of like religious contexts uh, i kind of went through it as well so like i basically just did it out of a sense of duty i didn't believe in any of the uh, any any of the uh, you know uh the things that the, the rituals and all of that um i understood the purposes behind it i understood why those rituals existed it just wasn't my cup of tea. It, it was my parents' cup of cup of tea, and you know, I'll I'll go to the temple once or twice a year uh, with my mom because it's a thing that my mom likes to do, and and this is something that like I can do with my mom, and then we go get Indian food and hang out for a bit. But um, yeah, that that sort of stuff is awful. I'm I'm so sorry we had to go through that. It, it, it's it's pretty it's pretty terrible. Um. Yeah, the, the Zosevix also says that's how religions work, including the political ones, uh, where, where it's all about manipulation and forced um, forced conversions. Yeah, you know, when when religion is used within a political context, it's only used for manipulation. It's not really used for um, it's not really used for like up uplifting people. Um, and, and you're right, Zosevix, breaking people is uh, out of that is 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 very very hard to do that uh and holly says this is beyond brutal and yes uh, absolutely 100 percent, i agree it is it is beyond brutal and uh and you know canada owes the indigenous people a a huge huge debt just like america owes its indigenous people a huge debt uh and a debt that is that inc is 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 compounding um you know only even only if you look at the way that they build pipelines through indigenous lands right like just in that the debt that the, these two countries owe the indigenous people just keeps increasing so you know again i think i think this comes to a shock for a lot of people um you know, I guess outside the purview of politics and history that don't study this thing constantly and and aren't on the pulse of this stuff all the time, um, they get shocked because they do look at Canada as La La Land. They do look at Canada as this bastion of uh, of freedom and progressive ideologies and socialism and all this other stuff, but. Uh, no, they're a colonial state. They're still a neoliberal country. Like if they were really a progressive state, the second this comes out, there is some restitution offered. There's an investigation done. That school gets shut down, um, and 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 you figure out how to fix your mistake. You figure out how to make a law 
that prevents this type of shit and there's some oversight and, and you know so uh, hopefully something will be done uh, as of now I have not seen any articles or heard anything about I think there's an investigation pending but that's about as far as it's uh, that it's gone so fingers crossed Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it. And, uh, and you guys help keep this, uh, keep, keep this, this train a-moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.